Hey guys, it's Misty Eyes, and I'm here with a quick update of my life. I am now home, I am now fully rested, and home from work, and um, back on regular schedule. Tonight was Bitchy Bingo. It's Wednesday right now. I know you're watching this on Saturday, but it's really Wednesday in my life, in real world time. Yeah, I just finished Bitchy Bingo. Um, I was off yesterday, but I slept all day and all night because I hadn't slept for like a week. I was getting ready for a national pageant and using all my free time preparing. Um, and yeah, that means I was not able to post my video last Saturday and I suck. I'm sorry. So I will post that with this video now. I'm not sure if I'll do it first or last, but I'm definitely going to post it. My topic last week, it was my topic last week and it was controversial. It was about the death penalty. Is the death penalty working? Is it effective? discuss. Um, and of course I'm going to do my own topic. Hello. Hashtag obvious. But I just got way too much going on. And then of course um, like uh, Saturday, Sunday and Monday was like one whole day. Because I work three shows on Saturday. I did three shows on Sunday. And then Sunday night after my third show I went to Orlando and checked into the beauty pageant at noon to compete or register for the competition um, and did take a little nap so that was good um, but hey it's not a beauty pageant if you get rest right <laughs> anyways it was a good time it was a learning experience I do get a lot of questions about beauty pageants and I never answer them or I never record to answer them I do um, answer them by a text a lot because I don't consider myself a professional pageant person. Um, but every time I do a pageant, I get better and better. Um, this pageant I did was a national pageant. And there were four other national title holders in the pageant. And, um, yeah. The, this pageant was really weird for me because I knew when I got there that I wasn't winning. Um... Now, when you prepare, you always prepare to do your very, very best and, and try to win. Um, I did win question and answer, sort of, in that every judge except for one gave me perfect score. Out of 40, they gave me 40 points. One judge decided to give me, I think it was 26 out of 40. Um, said I didn't answer the question and I was nervous. I needed to relax on the microphone and asked if this was my first pageant. No, it's not my first pageant. And every job I have, I talk on the microphone. And by the way, I wasn't nervous at all. Because when I showed up and I saw the four other national title holders, Angel Sheridan, for example, the winner of the pageant was um, Dory Saunders, who everyone knows from America's Got Talent um, as a Tina Turner impersonator, also a many time national title holder. I just was like, oh, well. And it, especially when you go out of town and they don't know you, I just knew I wasn't winning. And that was okay. I was just going to do the very best of my ability. And I wasn't nervous at all. The first pageant that I've ever done that I really was not nervous. I was there to have a good time. And I was like, I wasn't nervous. But the question was, I'll tell you my question. The question was, um, what is the difference between good and excellent? The shortest question I've ever had, P.S. So I got the question. The MC, um, Darcel Stevens, handed me the question. And I read the question really fast. It was like, what, five words? What is the difference between good and excellent? Six words. And I read it, and I go, okay, and handed it back to her. And everyone was like, whoa, that was so fast. Because um, I guess a lot of the contestants read the question four or five times before they handed it back so they could think of their answer. But I knew what I wanted to say. Um, I got this. I usually win on the question and answer. Um... So I said, I was actually going to say something catchy and fun, like I practiced or thought about saying, um, good evening ladies and gentlemen, I'm your fat girl number nine, but I chickened out, I was afraid. So I just said, good evening ladies and gentlemen, I'm your large and lovely contestant number nine. In response to the question, what is the difference between good and excellent? Good and excellent, that's very vague, that's very broad. Let me narrow it down into a specific category that everyone can relate to. Haircutting. Everyone's gotten a haircut. So let's talk about hairdressers. The difference between a good hairdresser and an excellent hairdresser. A good hairdresser gets the job done. They show up, they do your haircut, they do a good job, you like them, you come back. 
an excellent hairdresser takes you on a journey that you never realized you wanted to go, but you're super glad you went there. Again, I'm your contestant number nine, Misty Eyes. The audience went crazy. Um, the judges were all nodding, and like Darcel even said, "Wow, you did that!" And I got very, very many compliments on my question and answer, but I lost that category by one point because one of the judges came for me. But it's all good. I had a great time. I made some friends. I competed against a couple of my friends. Um, it was a good time. I'm really glad I went. I felt I was beautiful. Um, yeah. You know, you never know what the judges are going to think at all. And for those who are getting ready for a pageant, you have to realize that you're surrounded by yes men where you are. Like, without being egotistical or without being narcissistic, I am beloved by my community, thankfully and fortunately. And when I go out of town, people are like, who are you? <laughs> and, um, yeah. So when you do something you can't show your friends because they're going to live for you no matter what. Oh my god, that's so good, that's so good. You need impartial opinions. And, for example, locally at the prelim pageant, um, Miss Fort Lauderdale Large and Lovely, which took me to nationals, I got perfect score in lingerie. And... I wore the exact same lingerie. And I was much more mo comfortable modeling and playing with the judges than I was in the Fort Lauderdale pageant. But they hated it. But I think, again, they had their favorites before the pageant started. And, you know, that happens. Like, oh, Angel Sheridan's in it. Oh, Dory Saunders in it. You know, whatever. And I don't blame them for that. It happens. Yeah. But I had a good time and I learned a lot. But I'm now back and it is a new week. And today's topic for Queens of the Week is from Obu. Nay. And she has a four part question. What do you personally get out of doing drag? What's the most fun part about doing drag? What's the worst part about doing drag? And finally, who would you choose to impersonate on the Snatch Game? You're welcome. All right, so let's talk about drag. <laughs> the first part is what do you personally get out of drag? Um, I never wanted to be a drag queen, but I was always an entertainer. I was uh, a music person. I sang praise and worship at my church. I was in choirs. I competed in solo ensemble. Um, and I was in a lot of plays. I was a theatrical person. I loved performing. I loved to entertain. Um, the first time I did drag was for Halloween. And I couldn't believe how pretty I was. That's the real reason. Like, oh my god, how can I go from being an ugly boy to such a beautiful girl? I want to be a beautiful girl. And I think that's why I really genuinely started doing drag. But then, the second time I did drag, I realized that I've been trained to do drag my whole life. Everything that I had done in my personal life, hair, makeup, theater, performing, all helped me become a better entertainer. I was like, oh my gosh. I never knew I wanted to do drag, but I'm really good at it. Um, and I like to get you know, it's funny because I'm really shy and I don't like attention. Um, but I like to be on stage and I like attention on stage. So that's what I get out of it. I get to express myself. I get to feel attractive and I get to perform and I get to feel pretty. That's what I get out of it. Um, the fun part about drag, for me, is actually performing um, and fucking with the audience. I like to play with the kids, um, and I really, really love traveling and meeting the fans. Like, you know, um, thanks to my YouTube channel, when I go to Chicago and, and places, I'm walking down the street and people are like, Oh my god, Misty Eyes, Misty Eyes! I'm, and it gags me. I'm like, how am I out of town and somebody knows my name? Um, it freaks me out, but I love it. And... That's really, really what I enjoy. I like to meet the fans. I like to hang with the fans. I like to get to know the fans. Um, 
What is the worst part of drag about drag? Um, the worst part about drag is the pain. No. The worst part about drag is shaving. I wish to God there was a gel. Like, imagine if there was, like, a lotion that you could put on, like, a nair, for example, and never grow hair again wherever you put that nair. Bitch, that nair would be everywhere except for my pubic hair. And my head. Everywhere. On my lip, on my cheeks, on my neck, on my... Everywhere. Just take... And if I could, I would just go neck... Or maybe this deep? <laughs> Keep the back of my hair out of it. But I would wade into a pool of it and keep, or maybe I put Vaseline on my hair and just jump in or whatever. <sighs> I really hate body hair. That's the worst part. The second worst part would be the pain of it. Um, duct tape is painful. Bobby pins are painful. Um, high heels can be painful. There are many times I come home from work and my legs just hurt so bad. But I've got great legs because I walk around in high heels with my fat ass. So that's a good thing. But yeah, it's just really painful. Beauty is pain. For real. Um, and who would I choose to impersonate on the Snatch Game? Well, right now I've really mastered, or I feel that I've mastered, um, I've gotten some recognition for doing Adele. I absolutely love her. She's absolutely fantastic. As a performance, though, she is kind of boring. But I could do her really good. Um, I think I could do a funny Adele on the Snatch Game. But what I really want to do is perfect um, Fat Amy from Rebel Wilson. I love Rebel Wilson. Um, I haven't done it yet, but I want to. Um, I want to work on her. I think that'd be fun. Uh, I like her. Yeah. And that is this week's question. So now I'm going to edit in to next week, um, or last week rather, where we talk about the death penalty. Hey guys, this is Misty Eyes, and I'm here with Sexy Saturdays for Queens of the Week. And right now, I'm going to give you a little update for my life. What is going on? in the world of misty eyes. Um, well, I truly believe that you are dealt trials and tribulations and what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I also believe that you're given obstacles that you can handle and I do believe that um, going through things does make you a better person. So I'm amazing right now. I'm an amazing person. <laughs> I'm going through it is what I'm saying. But I will say that I have an amazing landlord. Um, she fixed my AC and unfortunately for her, they had to redo the entire system inside and out I had to be completely replaced. Um, it was an all day event. Um, and while she did that, she also did, she replaced my dishwasher and my washer and dryer. So that was really nice of her. So I have a brand new washer and dryer, brand new dishwasher, and a brand new AC. So that was pretty cool. Um, I'm getting ready for a national pageant. Um, I'm getting ready for Miss Large and Lovely. That is going to be Monday, this Monday. Um, and the other day I was on my way to Miami for a dress fitting. I'm having a gown made for the pageant. And um, my clutch decided to go out. And I didn't know what was happening because I'm driving on the highway and my car is like, hi, I'm not going over 60 miles an hour. Like at all. And I was like, what is going on? So I shifted, I have a stick. So I shifted down to fifth gear and I'm like, well maybe I could push it. And it worked for a second. I got up to 70. Speed limit was 65, but I got up to 70, and then I'm like, <sighs> oh, traffic happened, whatever. Then I couldn't get over 50 miles an hour. I was like, what? Ugh. What is going on with my car? I'm like, okay, I need to make, I need to get an oil change. So something's going on. I figured there was like a clog in my fuel filter or something, whatever. Um, 
So long story short, in Miami, in Hialeah, my car decides to stop working completely. Like I'm on the highway and um, my car is just decelerating. And the key key is that I was pressing the gas pedal and the engine was revving. Like, oh, rev, 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 but no go, go, go. So I pulled over, stopped, started to freak out. Like, I, I'm not a crier, but I wanted to cry. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, but cry, what's crying gonna do? Crying's not gonna solve the problem. You know, so I'm, I, I tried to start to panic and I'm like, okay, deep breath, turn off the car. You're safe, you're alone, you have your phone, your phone is fully charged. Um, so I turn off the car, I turn back on the car and um, it starts and I'm like, okay, I press the gas pedal, the engine revs, I put it in first gear, nothing. Fortunately, I have AAA. So I called AAA and um, it took them three hours to get me. The key key is that I was put on priority because I was telling her I was on the off ramp, but I, I, I did not ask for priority. Um, I told her I was on the off ramp of a highway in Hialeah or whatever. She's like, oh, you're on a highway? You're gonna get priority because you're on a highway. You're, I guess, in tra high traffic or something? I don't know. So, um, my high priority took three hours. I'm not complaining about AAA. I'm very, very, very thankful for AAA. Um, thank God I have AAA Plus because I was able to tow my car for free all the way from downtown Miami to my house because it is under 100 miles thank god um otherwise it would have been 20 dollars a mile so that was a good blessing in disguise then i get a haul from conda my clutch was completely blown he was afraid of something in the wheel well um and he kept throwing numbers at me he was like uh this is uh, $1,800 and this is $150 and this is $200 and this is $140 and this is and I'm like look what do I need done right now so long story short I've been trying to save up money for England I'm going to England um, for a wedding and I've been pushing money aside for that um, the Lord works in mysterious ways my electricity okay my male lady got pissed off at me because I don't check my mail very often and I guess my mailbox was completely full because um, I don't check it like every day and or maybe sometimes every week and um, I went to check it on the first of the month to get my electricity bill my F or my FPL which is electricity my um, Comcast my cable um, cell phone bill, all that. And I went to get my bills to pay them because I pay everything on the first of the month. Nothing was in my mailbox. It was completely empty. And I'm getting calls from Sprint saying, which I hate Sprint right now. Um, your mail was returned, blah, blah, blah. So I know it was sent back. Um, long story short, I didn't pay any of my bills this month because I don't have any <laughs> physically. Um, so I know they're not going to shop my FPL, I think for like a month. I think you have to be like two months late. So thank God I didn't pay that. So I had that money to pay. Um, long story short, I had to pull money from everywhere and then borrow some money. Um, my bill was over $2,000 to fix my clutch. And then I'm freaking out. I don't, I can't get my car. I can't do the beauty pageant on Monday, the pageant's in Orlando. How am I gonna drive to Orlando? Um, now I can't afford to go to Orlando because, oh my God, my life. Um, stress, stress. And I haven't slept all week because of my stupid fucking car. Like I get home and I'm like, I can't sleep. Like, my, mind's, my mind always races, but it's like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Where can you get money from? Where can you get money from? And um, long story short, you don't plan for a $2,000 fucking car expense for a clutch. Oh, P.S. My new clutch is brand spanking new, and I hate it. It's way too sensitive. Um, <laughs> the first time I get in my car, I'm backing out of my parking space, and I kill it. Because I go to release my clutch and it goes, 
um, then I go to drive and um, my GPS flies off the dashboard because I like psh, it's too sensitive I don't like it I am getting used to it because I'm like oh I gotta drive a little differently now um, it's beyond annoying um, that's my life wish me luck um, for this pageant on Monday I think I'm still doing it as of right now I'm planning on doing it um, it's my obligation as a you know a qualifier from my prelim um, and I'm, I'm the type of person that never calls out to work I'm the type of person that never lets people down and oh just talking about it makes my hands shake yes that's my life but other than that I'm peachy keen um just stressed out alright this week's topic is my topic and I chose I was thinking of controversial topics that we might have had to do while we were in school for example if you had to write a paper on abortion or a paper on that's a good topic I should pick abortion next week or another week the death penalty is it effective um, I think it's a great topic for our fans to learn about us as entertainers as entertainers you're gonna find out that we actually have brains in our head and surprise we actually have opinions and I do think that this topic might bring out different opinions from different people um, so I'm anxious to see what these girls are gonna say all right what are my personal thoughts an eye for an eye is what the Bible says right and I grew up with the oldest of seven kids I raised my siblings um, and then after that I was the caretaker of the nursery in my church and then um, I was actually in the youth group and I was studying to be a youth group leader like I love children I, I I'm everyone's mother like um, which is a good thing and a bad thing a lot of people are like oh my gosh you're my mom and I love you uh, some people are like you're not my mother <laughs> like I can't help a mother like everyone that I'm close to but the point of my topic is when I was, you know, babysitting or taking care of kids, a lot of the kids that, a lot of kids go through a biting phase, for example, and they bite. And sometimes they bite hard and they're really nasty and mean. And um, you could say all day long, don't bite, don't bite, don't bite. Please don't bite me. You're not allowed to bite. We don't bite in here. Go stay in the corner. But until you fucking bite that kid back and show them that it fucking hurts. Look, you bite me, I'm going to bite you. It's, not, it's an eye for an eye. You bite me, I'm going to bite you. And when you bite it, grant it, you never bite the kid quite as hard as they bite you. But you just show them that it hurts. And that's what they're doing to you. You bite me, I'm going to bite you back. And it takes one bite before they're like, ooh, I'm not going to bite you again. You know, it's kind of like spare the rod, spoil the child. Ooh, I'm going to get a spanking if I don't do that. So, capital punishment. The death penalty. I personally think that if our nation, if our government really did this correctly, crime would go way, way, way down they would have to do a black and white what equals the death penalty but they'd be like oh dude I'm not gonna kill anybody because I'm gonna get killed um, long story short I do believe in the death penalty but my controversial ethics come in who should get the death penalty child molesters should get the death penalty Rapists should get the death penalty. Murderers should get the death penalty. But then there's different types of death penalty. I think the death penalty should be you die in your sleep. Like you go to a dentist and they like put you to sleep. You know? And while you're asleep you get all this pain and you don't feel it because you're asleep. You know? Like a root canal or whatever. So that's what I think they should do. Give you asleep and then be like oh whatever that's how I'd want I would want to die just know that this is my last breath I'm gonna to go to sleep and never wake up if I was on the death penalty that's what I'd want but I think the reason they do more 
scary death penalties is like they don't want people like oh I'm just gonna go to sleep you know but but I guess maybe if if my death penalty was real you know people would be like oh if I die I'm just gonna die peacefully um, maybe it won't be as scary and people will still be you know vicious criminals I don't know I guess I'm really torn and complex about this topic, but yes, I do think the death penalty is good. I think that, especially with CSI today and science and DNA and, you know, it's you that did this crime. You need to die. You know, with CSI and things like that. Now they could truly prove who did the crime. You need to get the punishment. Did, should death penalty be for everything? No. Um, but they should know black and white. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to die. I don't want to die. But people shouldn't commit crime anyway. Let's just say that if our society was much more keen on punishing people, there would be a lot less crime, I think. People would know this is the consequence from my actions. But then again, people are death row. Like, I remember in college, I was a print, pal um, I went to a Christian college, Oral Roberts University, and we would write um, prison pen pals. It was our uh, pen pal ministry. And I remember um, I wrote like three or four guys on death row, pen pals. And some of them were on death row for years and years and years. I think that's kind of stupid. Like, you give them the death penalty, but then you never kill them. This topic is hard. <laughs> and I picked it. But I like it because it's controversial. But I guess I should have done my research because I'm really torn on my, my feelings. But I do believe, long story short, I do think there needs to be... But long story short, I do think there needs to be a cause and effect in place. You commit the crime, you do the time. And it should be across the board. Every state, everyone agrees. You know, not oh, if you commit a, that, if you commit murder in California, you get this. If you commit murder in Dallas, you commit this. If you commit murder in Michigan, you get this. It needs to happen. People need to know that they do something wrong, they get punished. You know, I don't know. That's my thoughts. But yes. I do think the death penalty is effective, but I don't think it's executed correctly. It needs to be done better. That's my official answer. Loving you is easy.